China's Belt and Road Initiative has inspired in-depth study at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, which has also co-presented a series of market insights in seminars to gauge the Belt and Road's impact on different countries, including Myanmar. Professor Park, thank you very much indeed for joining us on this interview and really looking at the Belt and Road. How do you see that as a concept across boundaries, really? This is really China stepping up and taking a, a greater leadership role uh, in trying to promote greater economic in integration. So quite a different vision. So looking beyond the concept of the Belt and Road, would one be seeing in the very, very near future ideas of risk analysis, of suggesting the idea where procedures come into place which actually normalize the whole idea of the Belt and Road? There's this concern that it's going to be very wasteful, uh, that these projects can be very low return projects, that many countries, especially poor countries, are not really ready for some of these projects to really make them turn into uh, good development outcomes. And so there's no shortcuts. There needs to be a discipline in the use of the funds. And that ultimately has to come from the people financing the investments. Development mechanisms whereby uh, financial institutions, both in China but also multilaterally or in other countries for overseas financing, can really instill a discipline and uh, treat these projects like they treat any other large project to make sure that this is a, a sound project. That's very important. So turning to the specifics, you're talking about Myanmar as a, a project, if you like, on the Belt and Road. How important is Myanmar going to be as a kind of, uh, what you'd like, a sort of success story on the Belt and Road, would you say? It's a country which is growing very fast. It is reforming and is attracting a lot of attention from international aid community, international investors. And it's a pretty big country, 55 million people, which is you know, just below Vietnam, Thailand. So it's that level. It's still a relatively poor country, and a lot of the institutions remain somewhat immature. Myanmar is exactly the kind of country that can benefit greatly from the Belt and Road if it can really convince foreign investors that it's ready. So talking about foreign investment, what do you see Hong Kong as being the center for much of that foreign investment that goes into the Belt and Road, including into countries such as Myanmar? Hong Kong has a very unique uh, role in international finance because it really is a gateway for foreign investment both into China and out of China, as well as a, a center of finance for the region. Hong Kong has a potentially very important role to play in putting investments together, putting deals together, putting contracts together, providing finance for projects. And so I think it's very important for the Hong Kong financial sector to really clue in and focus on where the opportunities are in this initiative. Turning to the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, do you see the role of the university as being particularly important where it comes to academic research? I think Hong Kong University of Science and Technology can play a lead role on research initiatives on the Belt and Road Initiative. Our institute, the Institute for Emerging Market Studies at HQSD, has a group of researchers who are attempting to do some rigorous research about the trade and investment impacts of the Belt and Road Initiative. The business school at uh, HKUST now has a major collaboration with Moscow School of Management in Skolkovo, and we're developing joint MBA programs. We're also uh, engaging in joint research on Belt and Road countries in Central Asia and the Caucasus. You also have the Asian Universities Alliance, which I think brings together a number of different universities and looking specifically at Belt and Road projects. Is that going to be really important in the future, would you say? What excites me about the Asian Universities Alliance is that it includes a number of universities in uh, the One Belt, One Road countries, especially in Southeast Asia. And sitting here in Hong Kong, I think there's a particular interest in those countries along the Belt and Road. So I think Thailand, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, these all have universities that are a part of this alliance. So it'll promote, again, more partnerships that can help us to better understand what's happening in those countries and for experts in those countries also to better understand opportunities in Hong Kong or opportunities from the initiative.